Ah, the book of faces. Or so my husband and I like to call Facebook around here. The social media platform that got my feet wet into how the world would become connected in a way that really no one could have dreamed possible. Yes, Facebook created a major yet unexpected shift when it released, causing people to really reimagine how we communicate with one another and how marketing would evolve. I believe not all platforms are actually created equal when it comes to social media, and many platforms evolve as well over time. Facebook is one of them, my friends. Does it make sense for you to include it in your author platform suite of offerings? I don't know, maybe, possibly. But here's what I will tell you. I don't believe in movement without strategy, and that's especially true when we are talking about Facebook. Today, we are discussing all things books of faces. (laughs) Let's dive in. Hey, I'm Stephanie Fegger, and Empower is my middle name. Okay, well, not really, but I think it should be. (laughs) I believe that empowered people empower people, and I'm obsessed with empowering you, the nonfiction author, with impactful marketing strategies to help you take your important message and share it with those who desperately need it and want it, and most importantly, will buy it. I am the owner and chief strategist of the Empower PR Group and the author of three books myself, including my new book, Make Your Author Impact sell more books, increase your reach, and achieve your why. I've been called to merge my love for reading books and writing books and marketing books to help nonfiction authors with laser-focused strategies and tactics, to write books that sell, promote books to those who need and want them most, and build meaningful businesses from empowering messages. I would love for you to think of this podcast as your one-stop shop for marketing insights from an author who has been there and done that, because I have, and understands exactly where you are. So get your pins ready because I am ready to empower you. This is the Empowered Author Podcast. Social media creates such a dilemma and I am so frustrated and tired and exhausted of hearing authors battle it. I don't want you to battle that. I want you to battle other things, but it's not that one. (laughs) So where should you be? How should you be present? How much time should you spend there? What should you talk about? Ah, There are way too many questions that you are faced with. And if it makes my head spin, I am pretty daggone confident it makes yours spin too. So today I want to calm any spinning heads and really get into the weeds of what each of the social media platforms have to offer and how you could or should be showing up. Today we are talking about Facebook. Now, you know, Facebook used to be the main mode of information sharing for a lot of people on social platforms. The other platforms were just a blip in the system for a long time, and Facebook was the mode of communication because it offered a tool for people to get an inside glimpse of what their friends were doing and what others in their spheres of influence may be doing as well. But like most platforms, it has evolved and it has turned into a platform that is really focused on personal conversation. I say that because anytime I see people trying to do anything else but that, usually it's not successful. So when thinking about Facebook, I want you to think about it through the lens of personal connections. And I'm talking about personal connections. Your business connections can have personal connections too, but I'm talking about personal connections and personal implications. You see, some businesses are thriving on this platform, which is awesome. But if you really dig deep and figure out why they're thriving, what that meaningful differentiator is, it is because they have found a way to not be seen as quote unquote, the business, but rather quote unquote, the people behind the business. You see people buy from people. And if you want to be successful at selling books or building and growing your business on Facebook, you need to embrace that single sentence that people buy from people because it is what makes Facebook so unique. It's all the personal elements that are attached to it. You see people come to Facebook to be real. And I'm using air quotes around this because I recently shared with somebody, if you're wanting to air your energy and thoughts in Facebook, don't because it's really not about being that level of real, but I'm talking about authentic, vulnerable, and interweave that into Facebook's algorithms. Or at least that's how it used to be, right? That's really been the core of it. 
I have actually found though, less and less businesses and authors and authorpreneurs have the success that they used to have on Facebook years ago with the success they could have on Facebook now, if they are just focusing on the book itself. Gone are the ads where you just do a push on book sales. It just doesn't convert the way it used to. If you're just pushing a product or a business and you're not looking at really building a meaningful relationship, then you're going to not see the ROI on this platform that you used to be able to see. Because people don't tend to be excited anymore about following pages or joining groups unless those two are focused on value giving and on alignment with something that they need. All right, so think to yourself for a minute. When's the last time you've joined a Facebook group? or followed a Facebook page that someone's made a recommendation for you to do. I am not going to lie. I get irritated nowadays when I get those requests come in. And I know I'm not alone. And it's because what used to work and what works now might not be congruent, might not be the same or parallel. And that is the nature of the social media beast. The other thing to be aware of here is years ago, having a Facebook page was the way to do it and separation of like church and state, right? Separation of personal and professional worked, but the Facebook algorithms aren't given a lot of love nowadays to these Facebook pages out there anymore. I don't know if you've noticed it or not, but what I have seen in the trends that I've been watching is unless you are doing paid advertising on Facebook, then I don't see Facebook pages getting the visibility that they used to. The algorithms just don't love them the same. So I want to share with you some of my recommendations on how to take full advantage of Facebook if you're an author and if you are an author looking to sell books and build and grow your business. That's what we're going to focus on today. I'd love for us to dig into Facebook in three ways. I want to talk, first of all, a little bit more about the platform, who's on it. And then I would like to talk about your infrastructure. What does it mean for you to be on it? where should you be and how, and how can you engage on it most effectively? So who lives on Facebook? Well, lots of people do, and lots of people don't. Nowadays, Facebook has evolved a bit to be a different kind of demographic than it was even a year ago or a couple of years ago. A lot of people are on Facebook. I'm seeing less and less businesses being engaged on it. And I think that has a lot to do with the algorithms. So years ago, Facebook ads were superbly effective. You could make really, really focused Facebook ad investment, and you could see a really strong ROI. I have dabbled in Facebook ads early in my business before giving up advertising altogether because I'm just not a fan of any form of paid advertising. It's just not in the nature of how I tackle work and how I tackle message sharing. But there are a lot of people who really, really loved it. So the people who used to be on Facebook and who still might be on Facebook or maybe some businesses, um, usually some focused local business owners. Some people are using Facebook, specifically Facebook pages instead of a website. Don't do that. That's my little on the side. Don't do that. Do not be the person that does that. Have a business website, even if it's a one page website. If you are on this platform, I want you to sit back and ask yourself why. Why are you on this platform? How do you currently engage with businesses and thought leaders and authors or authorpreneurs on it? And then I want you to ask yourself, who is your target reader? And does your target reader go to Facebook to get their information? I find that Facebook is a beautiful blend of lots of different demographics. So I wanted to share with you some Facebook stats that I found on Sprout Social. These are updated as of March 2022. A couple of them I think are really interesting for you to be aware of. So one of the things that they've noted in regard to Facebook demographics is that it is a diverse audience. Tends to be users from the ages of 25 to 34 are the largest Facebook audience group, which I actually think is very interesting. That said, Over a third of the Facebook users overall are actually 45 or older, which is what I am noticing more in my own personal experience on Facebook. Another stat that Sprout Social shares is that, you know, many people think of Twitter as the breaking news platform, but actually two thirds of adult users are going to Facebook to consume news and nearly a third of them are doing so on a regular basis. 
I'm glad that they shared this particular statistic because this is something I'm noticing, and this is in alignment with how ads and pages work. They share that the majority of content that is seen by Facebook users actually are coming from friends and people that they are following. So this is the at the core of when I say Facebook is a platform of connection. They have really created this ecosystem within it where the people you're connected to, you are learning the most from. And that's true on other platforms, but specifically on Facebook. Knowing the ins and outs of your target audience and your target reader will help you to identify what the right social media platforms are for you. And Facebook may or may not be that. If they are, however, I think the question you should be asking yourself is, is your target reader going to Facebook for insights in how you or someone else can be a solution to a problem that they are facing? I actually don't think that people go to Facebook excited to learn about a book. I don't pick your straw up off the ground. (laughs) But what they do go to Facebook for is excitement to learn about other people and what other people are doing. Facebook is a really beautiful tool for this. And it's also a great tool for people to observe and absorb. So if you can share on Facebook in an organic and authentic way, you might actually see a spike in book sales. to have a page or not have a page. This is the current question many authors are asking me. Should they have a Facebook author page or a Facebook group? And I want you to sit back and consider some reasons why you may or you may not. What I will say is that both Facebook pages and Facebook groups, which are different than your Facebook profile, offer you a way to interact with people. And if you are looking to create something and not interact with people, I don't know if social media is the place for you. I definitely don't know if Facebook is. (laughs) So people are going to connect with authors and author brands and businesses on Facebook because they want to connect with you, the author. They do not want to engage with a bot or some form of corporate speak. They want to connect with the author and learn and engage with and from them. So should you have a Facebook page? Well, if you see yourself wanting to do any form of Facebook advertising, you're going to have to. The only way to be doing advertising on Facebook is through a Facebook page. You cannot do that on a personal profile. So if that is something you want to try, might as well be getting your Facebook page up and going. Also, if you want to create really clear delineation between you and your personal life, your book and your author life, you may want to have a separate page. My only caveat here for you is this. The more you add, the more layers you start adding in your business, in your life, and in your social dilemmas, the more dilemmas that are brought up, the more you have to think about how to be and show up in these different places. And the reality is, is like I just shared, nobody wants to follow an author on social. That is all corporate speak. So people want to connect with people and readers want to connect with authors. If you are wanting to create a clear delineation, that is totally fine. But just be aware that you might be creating double the work on your side. Also, if you want to leverage like a social scheduler, you're going to have to get a Facebook page too, because you cannot schedule personal posts. That's just something that Facebook has. And it's annoying, but they didn't ask me. (laughs) Remember, people come to Facebook for connection. And I have found over time that business pages sometimes just lack that connection that I love. I am not going to go too terribly deep on your business page, like an author page or a group, because I'll be honest, I've actually sunsetted many of mine personally, because I have found them to be extra work with a little return on investment. So I am going to share with you three tips for how to look at your personal profile and update and optimize your infrastructure. First things first on Facebook, I love to, and any platform really, I love to look at opportunities for passive promotion where you are not always having to be out there pushing your book. But if someone uncovers you're an author and they're interested in learning more, they can dig in. Now your profile and your cover photo are two prime opportunities because every time you update it on Facebook, automatically everyone in your connections and friend list is aware of it. So if you update it on the regular and you include a comment or a description about the photo when you're updating it, you very well could be getting some visibility for your book. So definitely take advantage of it. This is a place that you want to change kind of regularly. 
The other thing that is on your Facebook profile, I see very few people taking advantage of is your introduction and about section on personal profiles. They have a really great place for you to be able to add a link to your website or your book or a little bit about you or acknowledge that you're an author or acknowledge you're an author of what and connect with your business. Take full advantage of your intro section and it will help you with that passive promotion. Also, the bottom of your intro section is a featured section, and I see very few people taking advantage of this too, but you can actually upload a photo of your book and incorporate that in your featured photos. Engagement. This is the name of the game, especially on Facebook. So how do you do it best? If you are going to be on Facebook, and I don't care if it's a personal page a, or a personal profile, your business page or anywhere in between, I want to share three opportunities for how to make the most out of your Facebook engagement. First is posting, whether it is a live video, a recorded video, a photo or a GIF or just content post. The name of the game here is consistency and that will increase your visibility. As you create posts, I want you to think about things through the lens of you as the person, the human, the author, not the book. I want you to get behind that and I want you to share parts of your journey that are vulnerable and authentic. Maybe that is part of you writing the book and where you go. Maybe that's a piece of your book journey from making it getting it published. Maybe it's a new review that you got that you're excited about, but anything that's going to come off as corporate speak or salesy is not going to resonate on this platform. So speak at it and on it and write through it as you, the person, because people will engage with that more. My second tip is any time that you can do an at mention where you can tag somebody else in your post is a win because that allows you more increased visibility. The more people who are engaging on your posts, whether they're commenting or you are tagging them or they are liking it or loving it, the higher they will get in the algorithm game. So you want to get as much visibility out of it as possible. But again, do it through the level and the lens of authenticity. There's nothing worse than somebody going into the comments and tagging all their friends for no reason. That will fall flat and you will lose friends that way. So make sure your posts are honest and authentic and that you are tagging appropriate people where it makes sense. My final tip is around the groups section. Now I have actually spent some time going through groups and pulling myself out of many groups. However, that's because no longer are those groups relevant in my life. So I want you to think about where can you join groups that are not just relevant to you, but relevant to your target readers as well. Now, when you join these groups, I don't want you to do it through the lens of book selling. Book selling will work, especially if you have your infrastructure updated. I want you to do it through the lens of value sharing. Anytime that you're feeling like you have to sell your book, you probably shouldn't sell your book. <laughs> if you're out there sharing information and people fall in love with you, then the books will sell. Same thing with groups. Go join. Join these groups that have impact to your target readers and be visible, engage, but don't do it through the lens of selling. Listening is what is most pivotal within these groups and engaging in meaningful ways will create lasting relationships and connections. So Facebook was what started the social media nonsense in my world, but it's held strong too as a meaningful social platform for others to consider as they are navigating the crazy social dilemma. So where should you be? How should you engage? What does showing up on social media look like? How in the world should you, my author friend, answer these questions? Okay, the simple answer is this. Only you know the answers. Only you know where your target readers are. This season of the Empowered Author Podcast is really meant to help you uncover where you should be and how you should be engaging. And while Facebook is a part of my platform efforts, I will share with you, it is not the platform I use to build my efforts around. I'm on Facebook. I share on it. I show up and I engage, but I'm methodical and I'm purposeful. And the name of the game is consistency. We've created a handy tool to help you out this season as you're navigating the unknowns of social media. 
media. If you visit empowerprgroup.com slash social media, you can download the author's guide to the social dilemma where you will be able to follow along, take notes, and uncover how you can tackle social best. Also, you're not alone. We are here to help. And in fact, social media is kind of a specialty of ours here. We love offering digital presence audits as well as helping authors update their social media infrastructure, create content pillars and a social plan, and even develop template graphics and content accordingly. If you could use that help, reach out, visit empowerprgroup.com slash social media to learn more. Author friend, thank you so much for listening today and for saying yes to becoming empowered. If you found today's episode and any episode of this podcast helpful, it would mean so much to me if you would take a moment to write a meaningful podcast review. As you know, I am a believer truly that empower people empower people. And it has been so much fun today empowering you. Now you know what's next. (laughs) It's your turn to go out and empower others.